happy to see everybody here. Um, I know curiously, I wanted to know how many people attended the workshop last year. Raise your hand. Okay, that's a minority. That's good. Because the first half of the workshop today is going to be very similar to what you've been uh, uh, taught last year. But the second half, we're going to have a few changes. Um, so, as you may know, the CRISPR uh, editing has been growing in popularity since its invention, since the number of publications that uh, contain the word, uh, the word CRISPR um, in the past few years. As you can imagine, I didn't plan the 2017 uh, uh, result, but it, it keeps growing and bringing interest. And one of the, the resulting uh, tool uh, that we inherited, uh, in addition to performing your uh, favorite gene uh, knockout uh, in vitro, is uh, the ability to screen for a large number of knockouts together in a pool, this CRISPR screen. And this is exactly the topic of this workshop. Uh, so these are the objective for this afternoon. Uh, through uh, uh, the afternoon, we hope that you will learn how to design, execute, and analyze the CRISPR tool, uh, CRISPR-based screen, uh, that you will understand uh, what are the limitations of uh, such a, a CRISPR-based screen, how to troubleshoot some of the experimental steps, and we're going to have some presentation that go really into the detail of these experimental steps, to know some of our structure, get to know the compatibility directors, and establish a network of users interested in the crystal screens and uh, the applications. Uh, this is a, a flow uh, of the uh, editing mechanism, so that's what happens in the cell when you uh, together express the Cas9 endonuclease and a single GATA RNA targeted to your favorite gene of interest, uh, with the uh, GATA RNA being bound to the target and uh, uh, the feedback being introduced after the double-stranded break, resulting through a non-homologous enjoining in uh, an insertion of deletion, frequent movement to a knockout, and friendship and knockout of your gene of interest. I think everybody by this time is familiar with uh, this uh, technology. Sorry. And uh, again, uh, this has been used uh, since uh, 2014, has been used as a main uh, mechanism and main tool behind this CRISPR screening methodology, at least the knockout screening, uh, that uses this uh, endonucleus. So here is the overview of a CRISPR screen, uh, if you want to run it in your lab. Uh, it all starts actually not in your lab, it all starts in one of those uh, providers, such as the one we have outside, uh, like uh, Agilent. Uh, where you can order a, a, a oligo uh, array synthesis uh, to make all those single gap RNA for all the genes of interest. You will collect the remaining cells, sequence them in high throughput, at least sequence the, the sequence corresponding to the single gap RNA, and then understand which cells were enriched in your medium as a result. Of, of, the, um, of the selection in vitro. Um, we're not going to talk about today about some of those steps, for example, the library synthesis and the oligonucleotide, not even the cloning. Uh, we're going to really jump to, directly to uh, amplifying this library and packaging it to a, a virus. And we're not going to talk also about preparing your cell line or selecting your cell line for your screen, which is a, an art in itself. Uh, and the people who are going to talk to you about uh, all these steps today are um, Anna Borges uh, that will uh, walk you through the wet lab uh, part in the viral packaging. Uh, we're going to have JP Shen who's going to present a number of different experimental design in uh, uh, RNA, uh, uh, sorry, CRISPR screening. Um, and um, uh, Eric uh, and uh, Kristen will talk specifically about the library preparation as well as the high throughput sequencing, what you need to pay attention to. And finally, uh, Philip and I will walk you through the uh, bioinformatics uh, analysis. And so this is going to happen in the following order. You have that in your uh, little uh, flyers. Uh, we're going to have uh, all the wet lab um, and library preparation before the break and all the, the, the dry lab um, after the break. In, uh, uh, in addition, from last year, we have reduced this part, and you will understand why. We now have an online tool to perform a lot of these analyses. And with the time remaining, we have added a couple scientific talks to uh, spike your interest into some of these applications, into CRISPR screening. Um, so just to be clear, what we do not cover today and in this workshop, we do not cover uh, array uh, screens. You can perform these screens in an array, one single GAT RNA per well in a multiple number of plates. So we're not going to cover that. We're not covering single CRISPR knockout. And remember last year, some people were confused. They thought they were attending a workshop without 
performing gene, gene editing in their favorite gene. No, this is about screening. It's about genome-wide screening, actually, as a matter of fact. And uh, we're not going to cover the use of alternative nucleases. There's other nuclease that actually have been deactivated combined with activating or inhibitory domains. So yeah. these are CRISPR activating and CRISPR inhibitory screens. We're not going to necessarily discuss them, or discuss them, although the methodology is really similar to what we'll be discussing. And finally, um, uh, yeah, functionalized DCAS9. And we're not going to talk about how to design single gut RNA. We're going to uh, take the assumption that you have your favorite single guide RNA library available to you. Um, and actually, that's not the latest version. Oh, yeah, no, I wanted to. Uh -huh. These slides are inverted. Uh, you're going to get the slides actually at the end of the workshop, right tomorrow, in, uh, remain, uh, by the end of the week. We're going to put them on the uh, public av available website. Um, <clears throat> first, just is choosing your library. Uh, I went briefly to Adjin this morning trying to find out how many CRISPR libraries are publicly available. Uh, at least for a small fee. Uh, we have activating library, inhibiting library, and knockout libraries. This is the one we're going to focus on, especially human. We have a number of them. Uh, so how do you switch, select your library when you want to perform this screen? You, can, uh, you first need to realize whether you want to perform the genome-wide screen or more focused with a panel of uh, genes. Uh, you, need to sequence, you need to select um, the, the resolution of your library, how many single guard RNA, the redundancy of the library, how many single guard RNA per gene, total number of single guard RNA, uh, single guard RNA design, whether the, the um, single guard RNA are single or paired. Some people, uh, like JP, one of our speakers, is uh, using single guard RNA to perform synthetic lethality, expressing single guard RNA for two genes in one construct. So there are some libraries to do that. And finally, the generational antivirus. So here is a detail of some of those libraries that are knockout libraries that are available in AdGene. See, most of them are genome-wide. Uh, they are a large number of um, single guard RNA. I think the one we're going to talk about today, and that was one of the very first ones that really was utilized in a, in a uh, in a large scale was the, sorry, the Gecko version 2 system. I think Anna is going to talk more precisely about it, uh, but this covers the entire genome of 19,000 genes through 123,000 single guard RNA. It's actually separated in two libraries, A and B. So there's three single guard RNA per gene in library A, three single guard RNA per gene in library B. Uh, there's a number of negative control. There's a resistance uh, marker uh, for your selection, uh, pyromycin. And there's two strategies, the one guide or the two guides. The one guide expresses both the Cas9 and the single guide in one vector versus the two vector system you pre you prior to experiment express Cas9, so your, your virus is actually only taking care of the expressing the single guide RNA. Um, so that's uh, library choice. And finally, uh, one thing we're going to be insisting on throughout the uh, workshop is this um, uh, complexity problem. This is really tricky. We all want to perform a real genome-wide screen in high complexity, uh, and that implies that 100% of the genes are knocked out in our experiment. And in order to achieve that, you will need to pay attention to a number of these factors. Uh, we, there is um, a safety net built in the design and the library. For example, we know that we have more than one single guard RNA per gene in our library. That's a real important number. Uh, we know that we have redundancy. We want uh, 100 to 500 cells per single guard RNA in order to maintain this complexity. And we need to avoid those technical bottlenecks that can happen at multiple steps into the, the, the protocol, such as the bacterial amplification of the library, the purification, the viral preparation. Um, uh, and more towards the end, the large amount of DNA that you want to use in the PCR in order to amplify and uh, 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 your library, and uh, to the coverage of the library through high throughput sequencing. So each time you're going to see this little calculator sign, that's maybe a slide that one of our presenters uh, wants to put there to uh, uh, tell you about paying attention about the numbers here. Um, I'm going to skip through that. We have a number of vendors outside uh, that are uh, uh, available to discuss some of their product, including array library, uh, CRISPR libraries, and other 
uh, and pool libraries and other reagents. And finally, towards the end of the workshop, we, if you stay here and you need to be here to win the raffle, we're going to raffle two uh, reagent prizes, one from Aginan, the Sure Vector CRISPR library cloning kit, and another prize, the Illumina uh, Nextera DNA Flex library prep kit that you can actually use for your next experiment. Uh, these are quite valuable reagents, so that's going to be hopefully helping your lab. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it to Anna, who's going to walk you through the first step of the wet lab analysis. But we can take a few questions. I think we need to make time for questions this year. I think we were a little too fast last year. So we have people walking around with microphone, and let's make it a little more interactive. <laughs> 